Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon, today I'm coming back at another Let's Play episode of No More Future. Coming to you on my new Razer laptop. I love it. Anyway, guys, so the last place we left off. Oh, yeah, I also wanted to tell you guys, I'm actually planning on doing a bit of a um, interview with Sedge. I'm trying to get some background footage together, you know, but just me playing games or something like that as we talk in the background. I mean, as we, yeah, as we talk, so. You know, I just wanted to uh, let you guys know it's something that I'm working on, and I'm going to be uh, interviewing him as soon as I get some more free time. Anyway, let's see. Ah, yes, we were just tailing on a dinner date with uh, Jasper, and I, I, I can't... I, I'm, I'm just, you know, thrilled that I'll be able to partake in this uh, lovely event with such a charming and happy person. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, let's jump right back into it. Please let me maintain you for the next 20 minutes, and let's go. Alarm chain, you're up. Okay, let's do it. All right. <clears throat> you may continue if you wish. Oh, right. Well, I can't say much else of those two I talked to about earlier. The things they said and the manner in which they did in which they did came off as maybe a little selfish. Like they cared more about themselves than they did Pandora. But overall, they didn't stray too far from what I thought a stereotypical capitalist would look and sound like. Not like you have much experience with that sort of individual, aside from a few video shows and occasional reading material for class. <laughs> what about my grandfather? And here's where your hair would stand up all at once if your new body had any of it. Jasper's been true to his word so far, but the idea of speaking of his own family before him still has you more than a little on edge. You decide to play it safe, at least for now. Well, he was pretty scary, that's for sure. I don't think I've been this close to staring death in the face since my last days at the hospital. I'm not sure what to make of him besides that, though. He didn't seem all that interested in the conversation until you mentioned that fight, and even then, all he sought was to erase all evidence of what happened. I still can't figure out why. And for that matter, neither can you tell why Jasper asked you about this to begin with. Why did he ask about your opinions on the owners when he was so adverse on hearing your opinions on anything not only ten minutes earlier? <laughs> I see. So he says, and nothing more. Feeling a little annoyed, you decide to ask about that. Was my answer satisfying? Was it what you were hoping to hear? No. I was hoping to hear it. I was hope I wasn't hoping to hear anything. That's what he chooses to that's what he chooses to reply. Yet that look in his eyes says something else entirely. You're still unsure of what's going on with him, but at least you feel as though you're moving the conversation along somehow. I assume Mary never told you of the way the Pandora's shares are divided among the owners, either, correct? You're once again surprised to hear Jasper try to involve you in the conversation so willingly. It's a little tough to get used to after he spent so long trying to shut you down. Especially when you still have no idea why he's talking about this stuff to begin with. Why would she even tell me something like that? It's not particularly relevant, I, see, I agree, but it is rather insightful. That you can agree with. You still know so little about the corporation he works for, even though you owe them practically everything. Mary never spoke about them much. Arthur was unreliable from start to finish, and Natalie? Well, the topic just never happened to come up so far. As it stands, you're not going to say no to free information, no matter how insignificant, especially when it comes from the very person in charge of the whole thing. As it currently stands, my grandfather owns 63% of Pandora Incorporated. Miss Lightning owns 24%. Mr. Algon, 13%. I... see? But wait, what was the whole point of inviting the latter to, then? If Mr. Mo uh, if your grandfather owns the vast majority of the company, doesn't that mean that he's the only one in charge? It does. And now you're confused. Well, more confused than usual, at least. Luckily, Jasper is, quickly, is quick to step in to provide elucidations. Pandora was founded by, the, by what can best be described as a cabal of wealthy business owners and so-called philanthropists. Originally, there were a pl plethora of small-time shareholders over a vast capital that they squabbled over incessantly. One man, however, realized rather quickly that this was an inefficient way to govern our growing empire. Are you talking about your grandfather? That would be the logical assumption, especially considering he's the one running the, the whole show as per the CEO's words. Still, a cabal of wealthy business owners and philanthropists. You're not sure why, but you never expected Jasper to use this sort of language when talking about his own company's founders. Mainly because it feels belittling, somehow. My grandfather is not that old, thank you very much. But you are correct in deducing that it was a member of my family, though a distant relative he may be. As time went on, this ancestor began buying out his fellow partners one by one. 
In return for his leadership, he promised to send money to their families as compensation for the rest of time. For the rest of time? What? You mean that dude's just gonna be sending people money until the in until the fucking heat death of the universe? Alright then, you do you. <laughs> Lord knows you'll have enough money to do that. Enough to secure them a Secure them a spot as part of the wealthiest elite for the rest of eternity. Okay, I guess that answers my question. With none of the effort or knowledge required to actually earn such a spot. For many, it was an easy choice. Even if they wound up regretting it much later on, when it became clear that their revenues far outclassed what little they earned as a result of this deal. So they bought everyone out, and they got practically endless wealth as a result? And it was still nothing compared to what Pandora makes? You're not sure whether to feel pity or jealousy for these people. Either way, the ancestors of Mr. Algon and Ms. Lightning were different. They were bumbling idiots, same as the rest of them. But they were stubborn. That ended up being their saving grace. They held onto their stocks for dear life, and their descendants still do to this day, the lucky, miserable buffoons. For all intents and purposes, those cretins are nothing but glorified parasites, leeching off the fortunes we generate like glittering gold-covered pests. And furthermore, they insist on playing a minor role as part of Pandora's establishment, correct? It's actually frightening how easy it is to indulge in the dragon's venomous rhetoric when it's not aimed at you. You can't help but listen to the every word he speaks as he dances with language, carrying him the f carrying with him the fury and grace of a true master. You must feel ashamed of yourself. Uh, almost. That's the infuriating part. There's nothing more annoying than elites who styles themselves a manager. But nonetheless, they are my bosses, and I'm committed to working under them in spite of all this. At least my grandfather's there to ensure they can they can do no harm to this company. Or so I thought. The CEO has shared quite a lot of interesting info with you so far, you have to admit. Far more than you would thought he'd ever do. It'd be remiss of you not to inquire further now that he's feeling so talkative. So wait, Pandora's the family business? Hearing you ask another question, Jasper ceases his mullings once again and turns to address you once more. It's definitely no mom and pop store, if that's what you're wondering. But for the most part, yes. But I've spoken long enough already, and my throat is starting to ache. Likely as a result of all that shouting from earlier, for sure. We'll continue this discussion at the restaurant, perhaps over a glass of water or two. That's a little disappointing. You barely began talking to each other like somewhat equals, and the Drake already needs a break. It's understandable, of course. You've been going at it for quite a long while, thanks to all the weekend traffic outside slowing you down. Even if most of the things he said earlier were mean-spirited ins mean -spirited insults aimed, aimed straight at your self-esteem. But he's putting in the effort to at least have a decent conversation now, and you have to credit him for that. Now it falls onto you to respect his limitations and try to make the best of your time together in spite of them. Fair enough. If it can make you feel better, learning all these things from you is quite interesting so far. I'm looking forward to continuing this conversation. The dragon returns only a rough grunt as he turns to stare outside the window, though neither the cars nor the houses surrounding him seem to catch his attention in the slightest. He's still wary of looking relaxed or pleased around you, and you can't fully blame him for that given everything that happened. Jesper clearly has quite a lot of emotional baggage he carries with him at all times. Whether he'll share some of it with you in the future or not remains to be seen. Ooh. You've never been in this opulent area of the city before, at least to your knowledge. Downtown New Relay feels like the gaudy dream of every rich kid across the world, populated exclusively by wealthy or at least fashionable people and filled with nothing but shiny and attractive tourist traps. High couture clothing shops, jewelries, high-tech stores, nightclubs. You don't think you've been to a single one of these places before, even across the rest of your life. You're not sure whether they're supposed to be tourist traps, or if the people in this town truly have a constant need for all this junk the stores advertise so aggressively. The dragon is quick to notice your interest in something a little further ahead. Intrigued by the amusement park further in? Intrigued is a word Jasper is still quite cautious about using in your presence, but at least he's no longer cringing at the mere thought of it like before. Yeah, I've never been to one before, much less one that fits inside a city like this. Plus, a friend of mine promised to visit visit it together with me sometime soon, so I can't help but feel but be a little excited. I see. That one for the amusement parks, I take it? Never been to one. Never really seemed like something I'd be keen on visiting. If I want to simulate the feeling of going up and down repeatedly with no apparent rhyme or reason, the elevator at the HQ already does that excellently well. In general, it just always felt like a waste of time. Why, hello again, Mr. Killjoy. Been a while since I last heard from you. 
All jokes aside, you can't help but wonder just how much further away your destination is from here. You've been traveling for quite a long while amidst the tr this traffic, and you imagine that Jasper must have built up quite the appetite by now. And yet, if there was an end to this voyage, it's clearly nowhere in sight. As if reading your very thoughts, Jasper finally makes as if to move closer to the door, an exhausted look on his face. I've had enough of all this mess. We're getting out now. Hippolata! Nope. You have to assume that the Drake is referring to the car, or the AI driving it at least, considering that the vehicle makes quite the sudden turn as that name is uttered. It breaks off from the large crowd of vehicles heading further into the city and begins to drive down a much less frequent inside side road, with ample space for driving but no place to park in the slightest. That doesn't prevent the car from stopping momentarily by the side of the road, however, giving the two of you ample room to descend at your leisure. As you do so, the Drake turns to address you. You didn't leave anything, in any didn't leave anything inside, did you? Please don't start asking me this question, too. The Drake raises an eyebrow at your seemingly nonsensical fears, but it doesn't take long for him to sweep them under the figurative carpet, if you so wish. With a curt nod in the direction of, this vehicle, of his vehicle, the car suddenly speeds up and continues its trek down the lane, disappearing just beyond the corner. I suppose we don't really need to keep it parked anywhere nearby while we enjoy our meal, after all. Our meal? This is about you eating all of a sudden. Don't tell me that you were a mad scientist friend and made you capable of hunger as well. Well, I'm not sure if hunger is the right word for it, but I can eat food just like you can. And unless you have any reasons why I shouldn't, I think I will. Oh, bloody fine. But I'm sending your end of the bill straight to Dr. Shelley. I won't spare a single cent on whatever you end up eating. Well, so much for trying out the most expensive dishes at the place you're visiting. Not like you were rooting that for that or anything. That misconception was all Jasper's doing. How long is he going to keep pretending as though you're some kind of... Well... <laughs> you hear Jasper's voice beckoning you from further down the road. It seems he started walking away from you in the midst of your of your inopportune pondering. Are you going to all move already, or are you nailed to the floor? I I'm coming, I'm coming! Jeez. You catch up to the green reptile following right beside him. Well, beside him and a little further back. Wouldn't want to hurt his fragile eagle or anything. Plus, he is the only one between you two who even knows where you're supposed to go. Might as well ask more about that since you have time. So, what kind of restaurants are in this area? Just about anything, really. Traditional, fusion, experimental, and with as many different cuisines as there are buildings in this neighborhood. Of course, the exact specific changes from month the exact specifics change from month to month. But with this area being a hotspot for wealthy tourists and residents alike, it fosters quite the competitive environment. I'd say about half of all the restaurants are closed down and reopen under new managements every full moon. That many? That sounds harsh. It is what it is. If they couldn't handle the challenge, I should have never tried opening a restaurant here of all places to begin with. I like ambitious businessmen, but not conceited ones. I... see? What does that even have to do with your question all of a sudden? What about the other half? As you probably should have inferred by now, they're alive and thriving, and have been for quite a long time. Not only do they offer breathtaking menus, they can also flaunt a storied history in this city. A history earned through blood, sweat, tears, and copious amounts of sacrifice. I wouldn't have it any other way. So he says, whatever that means. Which kind are we going to today, if I may ask? What do you think? You're going to fancy the snobby type. You're going, you're going to the fancy and snobby type. You can already tell. In all honesty, you're probably not going to mind your surroundings no matter what kind of restaurant the Drake brings you to. It's probably just his way of speaking that's bothering you. That and the numerous people both out in the streets and within their cars staring at you everywhere you go. It's a familiar sight by now, but made all the more annoying and unsettling by, your pre by the presence of Jasper next to you. He must be used to being followed by people's gazes while out and about, as he hasn't commented on that or anything similar so far. However, that could change at any point. You decide to try to get him to think of something else before he notices a new reason to be annoyed with you. Y you know, I'm surprised we haven't been accosted by journalists so far. Unfortunately, you couldn't think of anything better than that. Unsurprisingly, the dragon is quite surprised to hear you ask about that all of a sudden. We've barely moved 20 feet from where we dropped off. Uh oh, really? Damn, that's crazy. Still, I'd be surprised if we don't meet one or two sooner or later, given how famous you are. I'm famous? Oh, fuck. What have I gotten myself into? <laughs> Aren't you supposed to be the famous one here? Uh, he knows! <laughs> there are no words to accurately describe how thoroughly you screwed yourself. Even the Drake can't help but shake his head at the mumbling mess you've turned into. 
We've probably, we're probably not going to run into any journalists right now. The place I booked a table at is not even a minute away from here, after all. We'll be left alone while we're at the establishment. However, once we're outside again... And all hell is going to break loose, you reckon. You already can't handle the gazes of mere passers-by when you when next to the Drake. You can scarcely imagine what'll happen when you add storms of people asking questions and demanding answers to the mix. Looks like I'm not the only one who dreads an encounter with those people. Jasper's remark comes off as quite the sudden surprise. Weren't you interviewed by a couple of them just the other day, alongside Mary? I was. That doesn't mean I enjoyed it. We needed to put out a public statement after your most recent stunt, and those fame chasers would never would have never said no. I did what I had to. It's about time you learned what you have to do as well. After that, the drake goes quiet, likely preferring to save any further discussion for the dinner table. All you can do is wonder what he meant by those cryptic words as you follow him along. Before you even know it, you're riding the main elevator of one of the largest skyscra skyscrapers in town, home apparent of several eateries and other high-end establishments. When the doors finally open, you're greeted by one of the fanciest dining rooms you've ever seen, with elegant tables draped in red cloth and glistening golden shards hanging by the ceiling through what appears to be a magnetic force alone. You're pretty sure you saw the, sa the name of this place over at the entrance, but you already forgot it. It's so long and confusing it was. What is even more confusing, however, is how come you're the only people here? Though the tables aren't quite numerous, you can't find a single soul sitting down on any of these chairs. It's actually quite the unsettling sight compared to the bustling streets down on the ground. Before you can uh, before you can inquire about Jasper about the strange situation, you hear the steady steps of an approaching waiter, also dressed in bright red bright reds and shimmering yellows. Good afternoon, gentlemen. On behalf of all our staff, we welcome you to our humble establishment. The middle-aged skunk speaks quietly but politely and tries his best to be as accommodating as he can. His gaze is transfixed onto the large reptile beside you, but a few uncertain looks in your direction are proof enough that he acknowledges your strange and possibly frightening existence. Thank you. It's been quite a while since I've been to this place. I'm looking forward to my second time dining here. And we look forward to delighting you once again, dear guest. Now, allow me to show you to your table. The skunk escorts you to the table nearest the glass window, which definitely seems to be the most scenic spot in the restaurant. Other than that, however, the table looks just the same as all the others nearby, small and orderly. You make as if to pull your, pull your own chair out from underneath the table, but the waiter quickly does that for you as soon as he realizes you were going to, with the most forced gallantry you've ever witnessed. Judging from the mildly annoyed look on Jasper's face, you were clearly supposed to expect that. Oh god, it's one of those places... You sit down and wait patiently as an endless procession of waiters brings forth the missing silver and questionable dining utensils. It takes longer than any it takes longer than any of you would have liked, thanks to the waiter's apprehension of, of you slowing them down. Afterwards, the skunk lingers a little longer to, enun to enunciate every article in the restaurant's menu in great detail to you both, with no regards whatsoever to your inability to follow along the conga line of impossible dish names. The one thing you've managed to understand is that there is no opting out of any of the food choices. In other words, your meal has already been decided for you. This is not particularly reassuring. By the way, sir, is the gentleman with you ordering a menu as well? The waiter turns to face Jasper, evidently not interested in asking you directly, prompting the latter to turn towards you. Well, are you? Good question. You're not quite sure yourself. He did say earlier that he'd make, the, he'd make you pay for the food you were going to order, or rather make Mary pay for it. You're not sure how much it matters either way. On one hand, you're not particularly excited with your pros prospective meal, if you can even call it that, while on the other, you are feeling quite hungry. And besides, you're doing this to prove a point to Jasper either way. I am. Skunk appears a little confused by your choice, but the CEO doesn't appear nearly as troubled as you thought he'd be. He merely resigns himself to your decision as he politely shoes the waiter away, back to his quiet corner on the other side of the room. After what felt like an eternity, the two of you are finally all alone again. So... You've never been to a place like this before, I imagine. You must have finally noticed how out of your element you really are. Believe it or not, I'm not a stranger to this kind of restaurant. I've been to some I've been to some place similar before. But before I became a synthetic, I mean. The last specification causes the man's eyebrows to furrow a little, but he tries his best not to let that get to, me, to him as he continues. Is that so? From what I've heard about your past before joining the project, you're but a normal college student. It didn't seem like the sort of background that would allow you to visit places like these on the regular. And I didn't. One time was more than enough. 
I didn't even go there willingly. It was all my uncle's idea. You briefly pause, unsure of whether you're supposed to share more details on what happened. However, the somewhat curious demeanor of the Drake and his uncharacteristic silence are enough to convince you to continue. I think I was about 13 when we went there, and me and my cousin and our parents were coming back from our holidays on the beach. We had decided beforehand to drive all the way home without stopping to eat so as to save time. To compensate, we ate more for breakfast. Right. So we were driving on the highway, and it was about lunchtime, and to my aunt, to... And my aunt, to the annoyance of both me and my cousin, boldly declared that she was hungry. My parents tried to convince her to wait until we got home a few hours later, but she wouldn't budge. She needed something to eat now, and my uncle, who was driving, regrettably obliged. Unfortunately, there weren't any Leroy Luffins or on the interstate in that tract. The only restaurant our GPS showed anywhere near us was a fancy-looking locale a few, miles, a few miles north called The Golden Canary. The Golden Canary? I seem to recall hearing that name before. It's a traditional French bistro, and I-138, correct? Four stars? That would be it. Yeah. A short chuckle escapes from the dragon's lips upon realizing where this is going. <laughs> Your family must have been mad. That's one of the priciest restaurants this side of the country. And not even one of the best quality-wise, either. Alright, guys, I'm gonna save it right there. This is interesting, seeing these two interact. <laughs> oh. Oh, God. Get Jasper some wine. I want to see. I want to see. I want to see what Jasper's like when he's been drinking. Is he gonna be nicer? Is he gonna be meaner? Is he gonna be more mellow? I don't know. That'd be something I'm interested in seeing. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a tip if you can. It always helps. And until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.